Saturday. Um, I'm originally from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, my, uh, my, my dad was a uh, Marine. Uh, so uh, I moved around a lot as a kid. Uh, I, uh, I, I was born in Kansas City and then from there I did middle school in Atlanta, Georgia. And from there I went to Memphis, Tennessee. And then, then, then from there college and things like that. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I want to, uh, the reason I wrote the book, one of the big things that I want to get across is um, it doesn't really matter the environment that you grow up in, uh, what you see around you. Um, you can definitely shoot for whatever it is that you want to do. Um, and so I talk a lot about that in the book. So for me, um, when, I, when I describe this in the politically correct way, I say I've seen a wide spectrum of quality of life. So what does that mean? That means I've seen it at the lowest of the low, meaning um, no water in the house, uh, lights off, uh, not really sure uh, when they're going to come back on, no furniture. Uh, just so you could know the lowest of the low to where I am now where I, I live out in a, in a suburb um, and I've got a garage, you know, and, and these different things. So, um, and, and it's that spectrum. So the, the most important thing for me was to understand that it didn't matter, that's where I came from, but just to go through. And so being in, growing up in that type of environment, um, there's lots of things that come along with that. There's lots of mindsets that come along with that. And I talk about some of those conversations and some of those struggles in the book. Uh, specifically, and just kind of three main, main basic things that I want to get across. Um, the title, Well My Mom Says. That title is actually a, uh, a, a comeback line that I came up with because a lot of people in my neighborhood were um, curious about why I thought I could do so much. Why, why did I think I could uh, become a physician? Why did I think I could own my own business? Why did I think that? Uh, why did I think I could, you know, I, I, why? why? And initially, I, I started trying to explain it in a sense where, oh, well, if you work hard, you can do anything. And, and people just really didn't buy that. And so in, in my neighborhood, um, everybody kind of respected everyone's mother. And so to get people off my back, I said, well, my mom says, right? And so uh, when I would say, well, my mom says I'm special, my mom says I'm smart, uh, it was a way for people to stop interrogating me um, about my, my dreams because in, in a sense it was uh, it was challenging what they thought mm -hmm. uh, what they thought was, was, was available for them so um, I talk a lot about about that um, having to defend or be bold when uh, describing what I wanted to do one uh, also when you come in a, when you come from a place like that where, where people don't have a lot um, People think it's always going to be that way, mm -hmm. um, and uh, having you know an, an idea that I could overcome that um, that that was a struggle. So a lot of people didn't believe. So why do I say that? You know, even folks in my family, um, you know, would say, "Why do you think you could be a doctor? Mm -hmm. What is so what is so special about you? There's no doctors in your family. Nobody else has done it. Why do you think you can do it?" Um, and, and so I, I focus a lot on having the mindset to be bold enough to believe in yourself and what you're capable of um, and, uh, and to keep going through that. And how old were you when you decided you wanted to be a doctor? Fully committed, probably not until my 20s. Probably I, I was a junior in college. But my mom was a nurse. Um, and uh, I started shadowing doctors when I was 17, 18. So the, the, the idea was always there, but I didn't really commit to it until, uh, and I played basketball in college, right. and I didn't really commit to it until I realized I wasn't going to the league. Yeah. Was, there, was there any one in particular doctor that you could say that really inspired you to want to become a physician? Um, there were several. Uh, there were several that, that my mom worked with, um, so I'm trying to think of, uh, of one. I, I'd probably say there was a, 
Dr. Nobler is who I'm thinking about right now, which is one of the uh, neurologists that my mom worked with. Um, and uh, she was very, very helpful and inspiring and supportive of me. Um, so uh, I, I saw that as an example, and um, I, I knew I could do it. Okay, so now growing up, like I said, you're from that age and the era where, you know, the whole gangster, you know, entertainment industry, you know, really came full force. Yeah. You know, a lot of people were looking at becoming a gangster, becoming a thug as the thing to do. Yeah. How did you stay focused through all that? Because, I mean, music, as you see today, I mean, even back then, had a very powerful influence on the culture. Absolutely. So, in that culture, you know, becoming a doctor, getting good grades, wasn't always the coolest thing to do, right. you know, especially in the hood. Yeah. So, how did you, like, be able to maintain that mindset and the strength you know, to push through all that. Um, I'll, and I'll, I'll pretty much say one, you know, one word, and, and I'll focus on is um, is identity. It's who did I decide was going to be my identity. So uh, yes, I could identify with the hip hop star. I could also identify with a basketball player or an athlete. Um, I listened to hip hop. I played sports, but I also could identify with the scholars that I read about from black history. And, and that was also a huge piece was reading my history and reading the struggles that folks that looked like me had to go through. And I drew a, a lot of inspiration and identity from that. And so it wasn't that that person wasn't like me or uh, that's not real. You hear that, you know, you're not being real, you're not keeping it real. Well, that was real to me. And so it was okay for me to go after that. Now that's not the typical thing to do for a young man to pick up a, a book like that. Who inspired you to do that? Because you, you don't really see that too often I, where somebody, you see a, a young man, you know, a young boy, pick up a book, you know, Booker T. Washington or whoever it may be, and just start reading it and be inspired. Usually they're watching BET or MTV or something like that. Yeah. You know, how did you... You know, to be to, to be real, I went to a school um, where there weren't a lot of, uh, of, of black guys. There weren't, weren't a lot of, of black boys. And um, I had a lot of difficulties with some of my teachers. And the e expectations were very low of me. And my mom would tell me that you know, I could do whatever I wanted, but I didn't necessarily see that. And I didn't have that model before me. And so for something inside of me knew that, the, their expectations of me wasn't my real potential. And I wanted to go and find where I could see what, who I really was. And the first, books I, the first book I read were about Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And once I got a hold of that, I started reading about Malcolm X. And, it was, and from there, it just kind of snowballed to reading about more and more success stories. And once I realized what they had been through and what they had overcome, and I came from that same people, I knew that I could also do it. Mm. So you kind of just focused on some of the traits they had, maybe some of the habits they had, you kind of emulated that as a recipe for your success. And I identified with it. Right. That was, a re that was real for me. Now there was another uh, great man that you, know, you said you also patterned off of. That's one that you, know, you call your Lord and Savior. Absolutely. And uh, how did that play a part uh, in your journey, you know, I, you talked about that. I mean, you have talked about that relationship you had with Jesus Christ. Yes. You know, how did that help you? How, how did you make the Bible applicable, you know, in your journey to bring you to the success you have today? For for me, um, and you know, like uh, on a, on our phone call. But for me, when I decided to give my life to Christ, it was a very uh, black and white type of decision. It was a yes or a no. Um, and with that came his word. So with that came the Bible. So it was either was I going to believe what it said in it or was I not going to believe it. And for me, I was going to believe it. And so some of the simple kind of basic scriptures, all things are possible through those who love Christ, I actually believed it. It was, mm. if, if I was going to be all in, I would call myself a Christian. I had to say I was going to believe it. That's just how I think. And so it was very simple for me. Um, 
medicate, uh, meditate on all, all that's good. Um, I don't know the exact, the exact scripture, but uh, make sure you focus on things that are holy, things that are just, things that are kind. Focusing, focusing on that. Um, that was one of them. Um, it's real kind of basic things, but I held on to them. Mm -hmm. And so when something, um, you know, when something would happen to me, I would go back to that truth as being the rock or the base that was unshakable, something that you could not take away from me. Mm. So even though uh, an obstacle may have come or this person was, was giving me this sort of struggle, all things are working together for my good. That's another one. Mm -hmm. So if that's my faith, that's what I believe, I was going to walk in that. So you developed the mind of Christ, basically. That's I, 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 I wanted to believe what he told me about myself. There it is there. All right. So now, you know, what type of advice, you know, you see what's going on in today's world. Okay, you see that it's escalated. I mean, promiscuity, crime, um, this whole, you know, thug mentality now, I mean, just escalated to new levels now. You know, what do you think about that, and what do you think the solution is um, to, you know, get these youth back on track? I, and it, this is one of the, um, the areas where I won't say my message is controversial, but it's the one where I... I really speak to purpose in your dream. Mm -hmm. So everyone may have an idea of what they want you to do with your life, but I want you to believe in yourself and believe in your dream. So yeah, everyone's not meant to be a doctor. Everyone's not going to be a doctor. Everyone's not going to go to law school. Uh, so I think it's one, empowering the individual enough to believe in themselves despite what they see. Number one, so, and, and I start off with the fundamentals in, in the book, uh, the fundament, some of the fundamentals, you're special, you can do it, you're going to have to do, you, hard work, is, it's going to take hard work. Some of the very basics, so I think a lot of us are defeated before we even try, and so I think mentality is a big piece. Right. Your mindset, what you believe about yourself is probably the number one. And then, and then the number two is mentors. Finding somebody that has done or is doing what you want to do, and that's one of the issues. And and I, you know, thank God, my mom was a nurse, and she was able to put physicians in front of me. And so that's a big part of my. So I can't say that I was. I, you know, I thought about all this. No, I. My mom put a doctor in front of me. Hmm. I, I benefited from seeing that. Um, you know, and and so I, I. That's another piece. So the modeling. We, we model, and it's funny, I'll tell, I'll tell you this classic story right here. First time I ever did, a, I ever, did a public, ever did public speaking, very, very first time, they gave me a mic. When I grabbed the mic, I grabbed it like I had seen every rapper grab the mic. I grabbed it like this, turned it up, and was like this. Mm -hmm. Without even thinking, right. you, you know what I mean? Because yeah. that has that was what had been modeled before me. Right. That's how you held the mic, and so boom! As soon as I got it, it was like boom, just like this. <laughs> and um, and it was in that moment that I realized that uh, the importance of modeling right. and how you benefit from the modeling that has been gone before you. Um, but that's a simple example. But that's how powerful it is. It's it's a it's very unconscious. Right. It's it's your it's your unconscious mind, and 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 that it's that imprinting that's going on. So one, uh, making sure you, you 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 build yourself up, build your mentality, understand what you're capable of, and then number two, get around those people that are doing the same thing. So you're saying peer groups. I see in chapter one you talk about the importance of your peer group. Yes. Why is that so important? You know, why can't I if I'm getting good grades? Why can't I just you know? Kick it with some of the homies. Some of them might be gang members, you know. Like, you know, some might be my cousins that are gang members. We're just chilling, yeah. but I'm I'm doing right. What would right. you have to say for the person with that type of mentality? You've got so. I read I read a quote once, and it said something like, you know, you are the combination of the five people you spend most of your time with. Mm -hmm. So if you are trying to go somewhere to bring about some change in your life, you've got to be spending your time with people that are doing that. If you want to become a millionaire, spend time with millionaires. You're going to have conversations that millionaires have. 
if you are trying to move to a certain place, surround yourselves with those people. Again, it's that imprinting, it's that modeling that you get to benefit from. If you don't have an example that you can see, then you're totally based on yourself. You're totally based on yourself and you, on all of your unconscious modeling that goes goes into it. And uh, it's 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 funny, but uh, even 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 way past when I was in college, even in medical school, I had situations that that came up, and my imprinting told me to do one thing. And I talk about that. Uh, I have a chapter talk about reacting, and so. In my neighborhood, where, where I grew up, there were certain things that if a, if a person says something or if this happened, it was like an instant reaction that, was, that, would, be, that would become, you know. So if someone said something to you, it wasn't thinking about it. It was, it was time, you know. Right. It, it was on. Right. And, and, and so taking that and understanding that that imprinting can be changed or challenged. Right. And, and it was, like I'm saying, it was all the way into... And, and, and peer association has a lot to do with that. Yes. Building that imprint. Absolutely. Whether for the good or, or for the bad. Yes. Well, that, yeah, that was powerful. Any closing words that you'd like to say? Because we're going to visit you again uh, yeah. on some other different topics. Like I said, this is just uh, one session to many to come. Uh, I also want to know, how can people get your book? Now, we're going to be marketing your book also on our website. Mm -hmm. ThugExposed.org, but we can get you can get that on Amazon. Is it an ebook also? Yes. So um, we've got it at Barnes and Noble, Amazon, uh, WestboPress.com, and my website, uh, CMLeeJr.com. I wouldn't serve any other name. Yeah, sure, Mashiach. There's that.